Glitter is a movie about a working class woman from an underprivileged background, Billy Frank, who begins to climb the ladder of success because of her ability to sing. Her singing career begins as she and her two friends are hired by producer Timothy to be backup singers and dancers for the performer Silk. Silk is popular for her looks, but is not a very good singer. The producers end up using Billy's vocals for studio recordings while pretending that the voice is Silk's. This is an example of the way in which in a late capitalist consumer society, appearances become more important and actual than essences. Billy's voice is commodified and decontextualized from her real material body and appropriated by Silk. A late capitalist system decontextualizes and arranges signs in whatever manner is most functional. Nothing is sacred. Later, Billy meets the producer Dice, who discovers her singing ability and convinces her to leave her previous contract in order for them to work on music together. Their newly made songs are successful and they are signed by a large record label. As they go to their first meeting with the label's executives, Dice, referring to the record label, says, These guys, they're just the body. We are the soul, right? They need us. This is an important statement, emphasizing that the working class is the necessary soul of all production, without which nothing can be produced. Sadly, the body of capitalism under favorable circumstances is able to modify and neutralize the soul of the working class for its own advantage. This is seen already in the production of Billy's first music video, fully curated by the record label. First of all, Billy is forced to lose her dear friends from the music video. This is how capitalism affects our natural relationships with other people. Her friends are alienated from her. Ironically enough, Billy later appeases them by taking them shopping. Then, Billy is unwillingly forced to film the music video in revealing clothes, while men dance around her and touch her. The director justifies this by saying, I know how to do my job, okay? Sex sells. She's hot, and that's how you sell records. This shows not only the way in which the artist's vision is undermined by the economically dominant record label, but the way in which this often leads to sexual objectification of women for profit. The music video director is not concerned with an artistic vision. He is driven by the profit motive, which drives all art to become increasingly homogenized and inauthentic to increase sales. Dice finds this all too upsetting and leads Billy out of the building. Despite it being visibly obvious that Billy was uncomfortable under the filming of the music video, she still questions her decision to leave, asking Dice if they should go back. The mechanisms of capital encourage her to doubt her own autonomy because of the fear that what she's doing is financially imprudent. Later in the movie, Timothy, who Billy used to work for, returns. In the early days, he was promised $100,000 from Dice for letting him work with Billy, but never received this money. Timothy threatens to hurt Billy if the debt is not repaid. This leads to Dice physically attacking Timothy to the point of hospitalization, and this upsets Billy so much that she breaks up with Dice. We see how purely economic factors contribute to the most intense conflicts of the movie. Timothy's desire for money not only provokes threats and physical violence, but ruins the relationship between Dice and Billy. Capitalism is the cause not only of class struggle between the proletariat and the bourgeoisie, but also of many struggles in between people of the same class. This conflict reaches its culmination in Timothy fatally shooting Dice. The money that he sought outvalued the worth of a human life. Billy finds out about Dice's death just moments before the start of her sold out show at Madison Square Garden, but her grief seems to last just a few minutes. As she walks up on stage and sees the large crowd gathered to see her, she seems to become completely immersed in her own career and the furthering of her economic interests even smiling for the audience. She then gives the audience a speech about never taking anyone for granted and begins delivering the final performance of the film. The movie presents this as some type of resolution, as Billy accepting her grief and continuing her life optimistically. But concealed underneath is the movie's greatest tragedy, the system's complete irreverence for human life. Billy sings, the show goes on, and in the logic of capital, that is all that matters.